I'm Mike Golick. I'm Jessica Smetana. Welcome to another edition of Golick and Smetty. I am Mike Golick Sr. She is Jess Smetana. I am in a hotel room. I'll explain. Jess, your picture today looks, well, you always look amazing. The picture Thank you. is incredibly crystal clear. What's going on? It's it's terrifyingly clear, Mike, because we are now <laughs> on the DraftKings network and we're on Samsung TV Fast Channel channel 1168. So DraftKings sent me this at home equipment setup, and this is the first time I am now using it. And oh my goodness, this the it's insane. It this is the nicest camera that I've ever used. It's not one of those little like plug it into your computer and it sits on top of the you know computer screen. This is like an actual remote camera. It's it's nuts and, and light panels and uh, like a, a mixer, the whole nine yards. So here's where where I, I want to involve everyone in this conversation who's listening or watching because we have turned now into a society with COVID of setting stuff up at home. And, it, and I'm not just talking about sports shows or anything. It's people are working from home. So people have set up actual studios or wherever their workspace is at home. And I guess different companies will send different things. People will buy the, the ring lights and the different cameras. So I have a very basic setup here that I luckily can figure out and do. I don't know how well I look on camera. Quite honestly, <laughs> I don't care. Uh, but I just want to make sure people can hear me and see me. But the, the stuff from what Mike has told me that they have sent, and now you are telling me, here's my fear. And I wonder how much of this fear is with everybody else who maybe got sent equipment by their company to do at home work. I have no idea how I'm going to set all this up because Mike said it's a lot of stuff, a lot of things to hook up, and I am going to be clueless on how to do this. Yeah, well... I, my, my background in media is as a, a video producer. So I have like a, a teeny bit of, of knowledge when it comes to how to set things up. But that all went out the window when all of this equipment arrived and I knew there was no way it was going to happen. So, um, Danny Benitez, one of the Levitard show producers, video producers came over and actually set it up for me. And it took oh. like three hours on Friday. And it was, it was very funny, Mike. There was a 0% chance. Like I, the most I could do was like lift up the tripod. I was like, I don't know. Technology has now pro progressed to a degree in which I'm useless also. And I don't know how to set any of this up myself. So, I mean, what did everybody do? Did you have to, did people have to get like you did somebody from work to come to their house? Do you, do you fall? Follow like a video of how to set it because all this I'm getting ready to head back to my place at Notre Dame and all the equipment is there waiting for me with nobody to help me. My wife will be there and she'll be able to do infinitely <laughs> way more no, than I. So I, what the hell am I supposed to do? It's not. I mean, it's not that hard. It's just like if you can get someone to do it for you, you should because it will probably take you double the amount of time that it took him and 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 I'm my advice is the same with any time you don't know how to do something YouTube there's YouTube tutorials for literally everything now and it's it's a great resource Mike so good luck so if you had to set this up Absolutely. by yourself you think you could have done it I think it would have taken me forever but I think I could have done it yeah I am I am mortified. I mean, I am absolutely terrified <laughs> of getting there because I'm going to get there on a Monday like afternoon and only and and only have like a, a half a day to set it up before we do our thing and I do the show with with Mike of trying to get everything set up. I am screwed. I just I just hope I'm not in the boat alone because I have talked about how not technically savvy that I am and I'm sure there are others out there like me. Um, who would Stugats. just yes look at all this equipment and go no way can I do this so I'm glad you got it set up I look forward to doing that I am in a hotel room just because my son Mike and I we are in Colorado Springs Notre Dame has a sports summit where they a lot of the heavy hitting donors are out here and they Ooh. bring out the the uh, Jack Swarbrick the athletic director and a bunch of people from the athletic department and they're doing it around former Notre Dame athletes who were in the Olympics because they're right by the Olympic training facility. The dinner tonight is going to be the, at the Olympic Museum. I am stoked because, Jess, I am a, I'm a, an Olympic freak. I don't care what event it is. I don't, care if, <laughs> if, I don't care if there are darts in the Olympics. I will watch it. Archery, everything. I love watching 
Olympics, I do love darts. anything. I love, I love it all because all of these sports, these people are working their butts off to try and get to this. And I appreciate that. So there are going to be Notre Dame athletes who were in the Olympics, like, you know, an Angie Akers who played uh, volleyball at Notre Dame. She has Olympic medals as a volleyball coach. Uh, Molly Seidel, the marathoner, uh, yeah. ran at Notre Dame. Um, she ran 5,000 and 10,000. Notre Dame was all American every year. ACC athlete Crazy, of the year. Yeah. And stuff. Bill Hanslick would play basketball at Notre Dame was actually on the 1980 Olympic team that didn't get to play because it was boycotted that year, uh, and others as well. So I'm actually looking forward to a few days out here because Sydney swam here at one point, but I never came out here to see it because I I'm, I'm one of these just over the years, We've done a lot of shows uh, for military, and I've gotten gifted to me Army, Marines, Air Force, Navy, all kinds of different shirts or sweatshirts. And I will not wear them because I, I don't feel – I won't. I, I mean, I literally will not because I, that will give the impression maybe to people that I – was in the in the armed services, and I was not. Oh, okay. I and thought I would, this was like a because I'm a Notre Dame fan. Oh no, thing. no, no, no. I mean, my you don't want to you don't want someone to thank you for your service if you didn't exactly serve. right. I would never want so. Got it. I, I actually have a lot of this stuff in my closet, and every now and then I'm looking for something to wear, and I'm like. No, nah, no, nah, I can't do it. I can't do it. I don't want to do it. My father was a former Marine. My father. I was just thinking, was a like, Marine. oh, I, I hate, I hate Navy every year. Oh no, Saturday. no, not at all. Okay. I do, I do not want to give the impression that I was in the armed forces when I was not. I have too much respect for the men and women who are. But I'll say this, I because Mike and I were just talking about what do we do about Olympic stuff? You know, I, I I'm not going to go buy an Olympic wrestling team shirt. Because I don't, I don't want to give that. But I will buy Team USA stuff. That's what I'm looking forward to is going to the to like the the bookstore, for lack of a better term. Do they uh, have the, that there? I, a merch store. Hell yeah, they do. Wow. I am going to raid that thing of Team USA stuff. <laughs> I will gladly wear that stuff. Not like a sport that would people would think, oh, were you you know an Olympic wrestler? No, I was not. I would have loved to have been. Uh, but so I can't wait to do that. And I've, I've never seen the facility of the museum. So I, I'm really looking forward to it. It's a, it's a Notre Dame fest out here. So, Oh, know. I love that. Get, oh, yeah. get FaceTime with all the heavy hitters. See if any of them want to sponsor the show. Maybe like, there you, go. you know, send us to a few games in some nice boxes, that sort uh -huh. of thing. Uh, you know, get, plug the show while you're out there. Mike. There are some big time heavy hitters out here. People with, <laughs> with names on buildings and stuff like that. So, I mean, it's a, it's an impressive group. So it's a, it starts, it's going on actually as we're, we're taping this, it's, it's Tuesday morning and it goes on until Wednesday night. And Mike and I are hosting a few of the breakout sessions and such. So uh, it, it's going to be a lot of fun. Uh, again, it's Notre Dame. We love Notre Dame. If, People don't know by now. I'm an 85 grad, just as a 2016 grad. And, oh, speaking of Notre Dame, with all the NCAA championships going on, Jess, we're, we're doing pretty well at this point. Oh, where should we begin? We have the softball team right? has made the NCAA tournament for the 24th consecutive year. They're playing Oregon on Friday. We have the lacrosse teams, which I know you've been fervently yes. covering. So the men's team is playing this weekend against Johns Hopkins. And you said that the Kavanaugh brothers are, are the star of the men's lacrosse the, the, team. Is the that the right? Kavanaugh brothers, the Kavanaugh family, I mean, through the years at Notre Dame, it's been unbelievable, that family. But Notre Dame has, has bopped between like first, second, or third ranking nationally this year. Their Achilles heel has been Virginia. They lost to them twice, and they're on the same side of the bracket. So I'm hoping somebody dumps Virginia before Notre Dame gets to them, or they're going to have to get over that hump. Notre Dame beat Utah in the first round, as you mentioned, played Johns Hopkins. The women, Notre Dame is the only school at for where we are now in the NCAA tournament that has both men's and women still alive. So another wow. feather in the cap for the Notre Dame men's and women's lacrosse. The women's Putting lacrosse. Putting a feather there. in my cap. There you go. They're, they're playing BC, so let's hope for a couple of more victories there. But I love this time of, of year when we get into the NCAA stuff, 
you know, starting in March, like with the yeah. wrestling and the swimming, and then you get into some of the other Olympic sports. Uh, lacrosse is an Olympic sport. Uh, I hope it will be someday. Uh, Maybe someday. But, but I, I love this. I, I absolutely love all the different sports going on, baseball, softball, the lacrosse that's happening. So uh, it's fun fun to follow all the Notre Dameers now in, in, in what's happening as we have finished spring football and everybody is going into their break now before we start fall camp and jump right back into it. Well, before we talk about the rest of the sports things that are happening, you mentioned that you're in Colorado and we will get to the NBA playoffs right. in, in a little bit, but how, how is the altitude treating you, Mike? So you walk off the plane and you know, you definitely feel it. Now I've played in Denver a few times when I was in the NFL and, and actually played here in Colorado Springs. That's where Air Force is. When I was at Notre Dame, we came up to Air Force and we played. You definitely feel it, you know, w- without a doubt. The one good thing, now that I'm older and I can come here and go out and have a beer or two, it takes less drinks to get you know loopy here <laughs> because of the altitude. So it'll probably only take me a beer and a half and I'll be a little lightheaded. You definitely got to hydrate more, but you definitely feel the altitude. When you go out on the field like for pregame, your lungs start to burn a little bit, and you're like, how the hell am I going to play a game? You know, I can barely breathe, but your body acclimates, you know, and you and you go play. You go do your thing. But you suck on the oxygen tank a little more during the games at high altitude than not. So, uh, it, it and it's... So but you're podcasting at a deficit right now. Is that right? Like, you're uh, out of the I'm, kindness of your heart. You're going to keep podcasting through it. Right on the side here, I have my oxygen tank. So every now and then I'll hit that I'll, if, I, if I go off camera because I'm, I'm hitting the oxygen tank, you know, and I'm drinking my water. And occasionally when you're talking, I'll have to take deep breaths to get the air into my lungs. But it's real for sure. If you're not used to it, it it's absolutely a real thing when you're trying to do any exert yourself at all at higher altitude. Well, we thank you for your service and podcasting <laughs> from an altitude. The, I don't think I could ever move there because I know when you're baking, the oven temperatures are different in high altitudes than when you're at sea level. And there's a mathematical equation involved that I don't know. So I, I just don't think that I could ever live there. But well, it, it seems like you're having a fun time. You're a good enough baker, Jess, where you would figure it out. You you would be Probably able to figure, figure it all out. <laughs> Uh, and, and get it done. So that's our Notre Dame spiel right now. Uh, so, well, Mike, we, we didn't even include like one of the biggest Notre Dame offseason football storylines. So can we squeeze it in right now? Yes, because yes. if people are still listening at this point, we might as well just go full Notre Dame. Go ahead. Tyler Buckner, the quarterback who won uh, the Gator Bowl in Jan- or Jan- was it? J- it was December still technically yeah. uh, during bowl season and started the Ohio State in the Marshall games and then got hurt. He's transferring to Alabama where the offensive coordinator, of course, is Tommy Reese now. So what do we make of that? Well, I mean, I think it's familiarity and, and, and I don't know where Alabama's quarterback position is. Listen, it, it's Bryce Young just was the, the number one pick to Carolina. I don't know who was behind him, but Normally it's a stable, right? Because we saw Jalen Hurts into Tua, into Bryce. So, I mean, they they have had quarterback after quarterback. So I don't know who's behind them. Listen, when, when you're transferring like Tyler Buckner or any quarterback does, you're not doing it to go be a backup. You're doing it to be a starter. So he must feel he has some legitimate shot to be the starter there because there's too many schools to pick from. If you want to go somewhere, you're transferring to play. He transferred there because he was going to be the backup to Sam Hartman. There was this quarterback battle that went on, but we all kind of believe Sam Hartman was going to win it. And he did. Uh, So Tyler Buckner, he didn't transfer to go back up somewhere else. So he feels he's going to have a good shot to start. He knows Tommy Reese, obviously the coordinator. So that's what he feels right now. So listen, more power to him. I have no problem with guys making decisions that they think is in their best interest to help their career. I agree. I think it's going to be super interesting to see how that turns out. So Alabama during their spring game, I think Jalen Milrow and Ty Simpson were the two quarterbacks that were battling for that starter spot. And I guess neither quarterback really impressed the coaching staff. So then a week later, Buckner enters the portal uh, and goes to Alabama. So now, Mike, I don't know about you, but I'm going to be very intently. I always am, but Alabama games, like I kind of, I kind of feel like I should root for them, but at the same time, like, aren't they, you know, like a, a rival kind of, even though they always beat Notre Dame. Well, How am I, I supposed mean, to feel about this? The, the only way it's a rival is if you take a spot in the college <laughs> playoffs you know, because we're not in a conference right. or anything. 
But it I would don't know be if rivals the right yeah, word. Yeah, it probably is not. Um, but it is pretty wild that so Sam Hartman is a starter at Notre Dame, and Tyler Buckner transfers out would start at Alabama with his former OC at Notre Dame, right. Tommy Reese. That would be a wild scenario. So. We'll see. We'll see what Tyler Buckner can do out there uh, in putting on the different color uniform uh, like Tommy Reese. But uh, as we said, uh, the just like the number one recruit in the country now quarterback is Dylan Riola. I, his dad, Dominic Riola, was an old lineman in the NFL. I actually called his last college game when he was at Nebraska. You know, this oh. is a guy that this is a guy that committed to Ohio State, then decommitted, and now is committed to Georgia. It's a stacked you know, a quarterback room there with four highly rated quarterbacks. So, you know, one or two are going to be transferring. Here's, here's how wild it is. This kid, Dylan Riola is the second highest rated quarterback Georgia has ever brought in. You know, who the number one was Justin Fields who didn't even finish there, really? who made his bones at Ohio wow, State. I wouldn't have guessed yeah. that. Yeah. So, I, so, I, 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 that's incredible. I mean, yeah. that obviously wasn't Stetson Bennett. So yeah, that that's no, it was not. So that's where we are. You can see a great quarterback go to a school and then end up uh, at another school. So we'll see what Tyler can do in Alabama. That's our uh, our Notre Dame se- segment coming up. Um, the, the as the NBA gets to its conference titles uh, championships on the East and the West, who has the most pressure on them from a team to an individual? We'll talk about that next. Well, Mike, speaking of, you know, you battling through the altitude to podcast with us, the Denver Nuggets will be in the Western Conference Finals playing against the Lakers now. And Boston and Miami have made the Eastern Conference Finals again. There's so many storylines that you could talk about with these four teams making it to the Conference Finals. So why don't we begin with the Nuggets? Because, you know, they're local to where you are right now. This is a big deal for Nikola Jokic, right? He's won MVP two years in a row and needs to win a finals, I think, to have, you know, be part of the rings conversation. But he's playing against LeBron James, who also has four NBA championships and really wants to hit that number six. So who are you rooting for in this in this Western Conference final? Oh, I'm, listen, I'm, to me, I have I have no dog in the race. I'm rooting for seven great games and I doubt we'll get seven great games, but I hope we get at least seven games. You know, it, when you look at this. These are the same four teams that were in the bubble conference finals. So this kind of justifies when everybody says, oh, it was a bubble year. You can't tell anything. Right. Well, it doesn't these, count. Yeah. yeah th- these four teams have kind of legitimized, hey, we were we were really that good because here we are again uh, in the finals. And the thing about it is someone asked uh, Nikolai Jokic about, well, when you played the Lakers in 2020 in the bubble in the conference finals, what can you learn from that? And rightfully, I think he said absolutely nothing. There are two players <laughs> – There are two players on the Lakers team that were on that team in the bubble, AD and LeBron. That's it. Everybody else has changed. So you can tell nothing from that series at all. And just, you know, going into maybe the pressure talk of who's more of the pressure on, a lot of people think it's on AD to – because he is a guy, usually when you win an MVP, all of a sudden everybody then starts throwing darts. You want an MVP, you can't win a championship. Well, AD hasn't won an MVP, but we keep talking about him and his career up and down. Injuries have kind of keeping him out. He's balled out. When LeBron got hurt, he's balled out since the trade deadline. He has balled out in the playoffs. And if you're a Laker fan, just kind of hold your breath and hope he doesn't mm-hmm. get hurt because that that's, yeah. that's always been the Achilles heel. <laughs> you know, no pun intended, that he, that he would get injured. To me, Ooh. though, Jess, I think I think the most pressure is on Jokic because he has he's won two MVPs and he hasn't won a title yet. I think basketball, and we try and put it so much on the quarterback. A quarterback is associated with Super Bowls, which I think is ridiculous because even Tom Brady's first couple of Super Bowls, that team was led by the defense, but Tom mm-hmm. will get the credit for it. And I'm, I'm just singling out Tom because he has the most that we can kind of break down. Um, but you have offense, defense, special teams. So I, it's amazing to me that it's a quarterback stat. How many Super Bowls did you win? In the NBA, I agree with it because now you're on the court and you have an effect on both sides, offensively, defensively. You can have the most input in a game as a superstar, I think, than any other sport out there. So that's why I don't – I think – 
associating great players with rings is an important thing for their legacy. And I think Joker's got to get one of those. The last five years where they were ranked in the West, one year they were six. Other than that, I think they were one, two, or three, including one this Mm -hmm. year. And they've never been able to close the deal, even in uh, Nicola's uh, two MVPs. So I I think there's that legacy thing of, yeah, he was an MVP, but he couldn't lead his team to a title. AD has a title. doesn't have an MVP, but he has a title. Uh, You know, he and LeBron won that in 2020. So I think it's on the Joker. I think he's got to get kind of that that title to go with the MVP to kind of, or now listen, it's not the end of the world. If you're put in Carl Malone and Charles Barkley territory of being an all time great and never winning a ring for football, like a Dan Marino situation, Mm -hmm. you're still considered one of the all time greats, but you know, starting to stack some rings or at least to get a ring, I think is a key thing for the Joker. Yeah, I agree with you. And I do like that. We're getting a bubble replay because the bubble was such a weird time. Like I, I barely even remember watching the bubble playoffs um, because there was like, it just seemed like so much else was going on in the world at the time. I, I blacked out through that whole year. But um, you know, you don't have to travel. You don't have to do road games. You don't have to go in a in right, like a right. hostile, you know, away environment. So I'm glad we're getting to the, these fan bases are getting to enjoy that now in more normal circumstances. Um, but I, I think you're right, and I think like. The LeBron Lakers bubble championship was so almost like anticlimactic. Like I know they they ended up having some sort of like small parade afterwards, and and obviously it counts. Like the season happened, it counts, but it didn't feel like a regular NBA championship. So I think he wants right, right. a redo of that too. And, and obviously, you know, if if LeBron does win another NBA championship, all five rings are going to count. But this one definitely would be kind of like. It would bury that argument, I think, once and for all, that that season counted less because of the way that they had to finish it. Well, and, and this is such kind of a different season because Denver's been number one, right? So they've always been a top. Yeah. But, Jess, let's be honest. And the Lakers were – the Lakers stunk at the beginning of the year. They were like a laughing stock. They it's were crazy. La- I, I, they had like a, a 1% chance of making the playoffs I think like they were, in the I think they early were part of the season. Two and eight or two and ten to start the season, and, and the, the percentages were so low – that you make the playoffs, but Adam Silver has to be pumping his chest at the fact that you've had these playing games just to make the postseason. And this is the first year, not just one, but two teams yeah. made it in the playing game. Remember Miami? Miami was losing to How Chicago late in that game, the play-in game to get into the playoffs and came from behind to beat uh, Chicago and now find their way all the way to the Eastern Conference Finals. And Le- LeBron and the Lakers were a play-in team as well. So not only did you have two teams in the play-in tournament make it to the playoffs, but they're still in it at the Conference Finals, one in eight seed and one in seven seed. So it's pretty incredible what's gone on there. And and obviously for – and as I said, and, and I hate saying it this way, but when the Lakers are playing, it's kind of like Lakers talking about – Yankees talking about Cowboys talking about Notre Dame, right? It's kind of, unless it's a another like Golden State and the Lakers, Steph and LeBron. When it's Denver, unfortunately, it's blah blah blah, blah versus the Lakers, right? The Lakers get all the headlines and Denver gets underappreciated. So this is a year I think for them to really they they, they Jamal Murray is healthy. He's been not healthy the last couple of playoffs, so now he's healthy. So now they're kind of at full strength to say, okay, let's get it done. And LeBron, who knows he doesn't have too many years left, is trying to stack rings uh, as we go. So, I, I, And you get a big man matchup with Joker and with AD. Now, it's yeah. not the old school, my era of basketball. Throw it down low, back into the basket, two big guys pounding. These are guys that can play away from the basket. Joker may be the greatest passing big man of all time. AD, they call a guard in a seven foot two body. So the athleticism, uh, even though Jokic doesn't look like an incredible athlete, what he can do with the ball is incredible. So I'm really looking forward to that matchup. Well, in fairness to Denver, back to your point about like the Lakers being the brand name. Yeah, I mean they're they're the Lakers, but also you don't see Kendall Jenner and Bad Bunny at Denver Nuggets courtside. Seats, <laughs> right? I mean, there's just a proximity to fame and celebrity in LA that is what made the Lakers what it is. So eh, they still get to they still get to have that. 
Um, and can, if we go to the Eastern Conference Finals for so, a second, wait, like, we real, can real quick, Jess. Real quick, Jess. Let me let me just so yeah. I have my my pop culture. Bad Bunny mm-hmm. didn't Kendall go start dating him after this is after Devin Booker, correct? Wasn't she dating Devin I, Booker? And yes, then went to Bad Bunny? I, she was dating, De- and now she's dating Bad Bunny. Okay. Um, B- Bad Bunny, international celebrity singer, yeah. songwriter, sensation. Yeah. One of the most famous people in the world at the moment. Yeah. Kendall Jenner, obviously a member of the Kardashian Jenner family, um, also a model. So there's your pop culture lesson of the I day. I just wanted to get the progression um, that I had it right. Okay, continue. Yeah, you. I think you. I think you're right. I think <laughs> so. I, you know, it's not really my strong suit either, but I, I do keep track of these things when they appear in proximity to sporting events. But <laughs> um, before we talk about like the actual uh, Boston Celtics and Miami Heat teams, can we just talk about? how the two most annoying fan bases are now in the Eastern Conference Finals. Like, it's impossible to root for the city of Boston, right? They've won so many champ. I know our producer is probably, like, shaking his fists at us right now, yeah. but they I know, like, the Celtics haven't won as, as many as the Patriots in the last 20 years, but still, like, I'm a little sick of this. So I, I'm with you, but, but we'll, I will compare the two fan bases, but I'm with you. I mean, this is, if you're, like, 15 to 18 years old, the amount of, parades you got to see from the different sports in the Boston exactly. area has yes. been incredible. But as a fan base, while we can talk about Boston, well, I remember I played in Philly most of my career. I love the the passion of the fans, but they can be over the top, just like Boston fans. But I'll take that any day. And I, I keep getting ripped by Miami people over Miami fans. Because, I mean, it is it is such a look-at-me crowd show up late to games. And as I said, when I was in, in <laughs> Miami in 93 with the Dolphins, we had the best record in football, blacked out games because they still couldn't sell out home games. Uh, you know, so I thought there was apathy down there or the look at me crowd. So I, I'll take the Boston fans as aggravating as they can be uh, over Miami fans any wow. day of the week. Any wow. day of the week. I love that we were just talking about the, like, uh, the Lakers having like every A-list celebrity at the court, but the yeah. the, the Heat are the look at me crowd. But I agree with you, Mike. My, my my proximity to the loudest Heat fans in the world being on the Levitard show has really jaded me and has turned me against this team. I was I was ready when I moved to Miami to adopt all the local sports teams with open arms until I heard you know the people that I work with during the local hour on our show, and now I'm like you know what. If they lost every game from now until forever, it would be funnier. I think <laughs> I think the show would be better. So it's it's been it's been a long playoffs from them barely winning the play-in game until now uh, of of people that I work with saying that they always knew this was an Eastern Conference Final uh, cha- uh, team that could make it to an NBA championship. It, uh, Mike makes my head spin. Yeah. Well, I mean, and, and I can't do it. I can't I, do it anymore. I would sit there and say, nobody's picking Miami, but somebody's going to pick Miami. Jim, but Jimmy Butler has to be, you know, we, we talked about matchups, uh, Jokic and AD, everybody talking about Tatum and Butler, but then I hear matchups of Butler versus everybody. Jimmy Butler is going to have to, and he has in the playoffs, going to have to play out of his mind in this because Boston has the better team, the deeper team than Miami does. But, just for the fact that Miami is here, you can't count him out. Yeah. And he might be – he is still hurt. He's got some ankle thing going on. Right. But you're right. Like, he, he's he got to be playoff Jimmy. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I hear about this all day. Let's move on. We're going to do a little bit on the phenomenon that is the NFL schedule releases. So stay tuned for that. All right, Jess. It still blows my mind. When the NFL schedule comes out, all right? So I had to do a show. I call NFL games for Westwood One. And we, like all the TV networks, Westwood One is the the partner for the NFL uh, on radio. So we did a two-hour schedule release show. We talked. We had Andy Reid on. We had Jason Kelsey on. We had Garrett Wilson on, uh, you know, talking about the schedule. And I, I... I've done this schedule release show, not for Westwood One, but being at ESPN for a couple of decades now, Jess. And I will still say, from the first time I did it to now, I don't care. I just, uh, the, schedule release what? Means, the schedule release means nothing to me. A, you already know who you're playing. Now it's just a matter of when you're playing them. And the only thing as a player I was, a couple of things I was concerned about 
was because I knew who we were playing already. So I knew the players I was already playing against. So I looked at when was my buy and uh-huh. when was I traveling early in the season? Was I going to a hot place like Arizona or Miami? Because again, give me cold over hot any day of the week. I'll play in cold over the heat. So that's what I looked for. Uh, because we didn't have international games back then, and, and we'll talk about those that are coming up. Now, I did play in London twice, but they were preseason games. And we spent the week there, and we, we practiced with the other team. And because it was a preseason game, we found the best pubs to go to. It was awesome. But now, <laughs> these are business trips. You're going there to play a game. Jess, I don't care about the schedule. I don't care. But but wow. I, I, I've thrown my hands up because so many people do care about it to the fact that it's not only for the fans, but it's for every team's social media department to try and put out a banger video uh, to, yeah. to beat everybody else. And I know Mike's so into those videos. You're so into those videos. I, this is where I am the old curmudgeonly guy and like I just do get, not care. Get your schedule release oh. off my lawn. <laughs> I'm That's how you that. sound right now. Okay, I'm well sorry. No, it's okay because I like you said I'm into it. I think that it's fun, but I also like some of them some of them aren't very good and I think we need to be able to critically focus in on um some choices here because for me actually the the one that I think encapsulated the schedule release phenomenon the best was a very meta schedule release by the Steelers not you know I'm not saying that just because they're my, it's your team, my favorite Jess. team come on you're but biased. you watched did you watch the Steelers theirs was about their video was about schedule release videos and wh- how to make a good one um and it was the thing that I loved about it, Mike, it was short. These videos, some of them this year, I was scrolling through all of them before we recorded the show. Some of them were like eight or nine minutes long. I'm yeah. like, if I watch two of those, that's like an entire episode of Dave. Like that's a that's a time commitment. And I know you've never even heard of that show. So oh, we'll no. move right past oh, that. Oh, reference. I've heard of that show. I have heard of that show. Yes, I have. But I oh, I, okay. I, I have not seen them all. Shocker. I, I did like the, the Tennessee Titans when they went on the street. And we're showing yeah. logos to just people on the street. And the amount that people, this is where I think sports fans are like, how do you not know? But there are so many people out there that aren't sports fans. Um, and, and Tennessee, yes. the Titans people found them because they were putting up uh, logos and these people had no idea who these teams were. It was I thought that was pretty funny. I was thinking to myself as I watched this video, if I did that to my sister... I would have a hilarious video oh, right. because I guarantee you, my sister grew up in the same house as me, same parents, same sports obsessed family, same sports obsessed grandparents, you know, Steelers season ticket holders, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Went to Notre Dame, graduated from Notre Dame. She couldn't tell you a quarterback from a point guard. She knows nothing about sports. She couldn't, she could not tell you any of these logos. Sometimes I'll text her out of the blue and be like, Deb, who's the head coach at Notre Dame? And she'll be like, Brady Quinn. And I'm like, ha ha ha. And I just make fun of her. But she, like, she would have been perfect for this Tennessee Titans schedule release video because I guarantee you she would not have been able to name a single logo. So I, I, that one to me was a pretty good one. And, and I am amazed at sports people who are amazed at people that don't know sports. Like every, every <laughs> year, know. every year we get the, 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 the huge number that watches the Super Bowl. but there are some sports people that are like, how aren't more people? Wa- why doesn't everybody watch this? I said, gang, this is, we're, we're, we're in a, in a bubble here. It's a huge yeah, bubble, we really are. but it's a sports yeah. bubble. And I try, I remember I had this battle with Greeny one time when he's, when we were talking about, actors or actresses compared to athletes. I says the actors or actresses are way more popular around the world than the athletes are, you yeah. know, outside the sporting world. And I remember Greeny interviewed Ben Affleck and he asked Ben Affleck that about like JLo and Ben Affleck basically laughed at him and said, JLo is so much well, more well known around the world than athletes are that, that the people can't understand why more people don't watch the sport. So I, I thought that that's was why that's why you get J Lo to do the halftime show at yeah. Super Bowl because then you get exactly. all the people to watch, right? So, like that's a, yes. it's a no brainer, really. So here's the one that Mike's favorite was the Chargers, and because it was, mm. did you see that one? 
It's the animated. Yeah. Thing. So theirs was anime, and this is this is one thing I liked about. So it was it was clever. It was cool. They had tons of Easter eggs in it. If you like, pause the screen and zoom in on things, you can find like little little Chargers Easter eggs. But like, it was also two minutes long. And I'm telling you, these sports teams, you need a good editor. You need to trim these videos down because people don't have the attention span for more than. I mean, even two minutes is a stretch. You can watch really? a two minute video on TikTok now, and it's rare. But it's it, when you're on when you're scrolling anything more than two minutes, like I'm losing focus after after that. Like, See, it, that, it's that's much. one of the it's more amazing things to me, Jess, about about this this group we have now uh, of youth is the attention span that you could <laughs> you could make something this that's two minutes, youth. three minutes, four minutes, and you can't sit through it. How, how can you not you you when yeah. you watch something on you, you sat through over four minutes of Outer Banks didn't you and that was a a horrible show that we both watched yet you have no problem I sitting through, through an episode of that three hundred hours yes. of yes. Outer Banks Mike yes. I watched so much Outer Banks yeah so why you're, can't you watch a two minute right, video because here's the thing this when I'm watching Outer Banks I'm on my phone a lot of the time oh. and when I'm on my phone watching a video I can't be on my other phone, like I don't have another phone. So it's it's the device that you're watching it on. Now I will say some of the longer videos were, were pretty good. I love that NFL teams are now, you know, showing personalities of the players more and people right, are right. having fun with it and ma- making fun of themselves. Like I love that it's not this like serious thing, but I'm telling you like the Cowboys video, it was impeccably produced. They probably hired a freaking TV right. That's the other thing. I want to know the budget for these schedule release videos because in a lot of cases, I'm like, these people are spending tens of thousands of dollars on set lighting, costume, camera, editing, uh, graphic, whatever, after effects. Like all of this is just like, I, it's insane the amount of resources going into it. But also like, the, the I'm sure the Cowboys video was great, but I checked out after 50 seconds that, was that, that is amazing to me even now to hear that when you watch a netflix show you're on your phone i, I it's a blows Always. my mind that yeah. you can't just watch one thing and just concentrate on no that one i thing. i have i I've, I've talked about this a lot on my my other podcast mike i i have the tv i have like my big tv i have my laptop sometimes i'm on you know t- twitter or scrolling right. something else like online shopping whatever buying something on amazon and then i have my ah. phone and on my phone i'm texting or i'm on tiktok or twitter or whatever so like i got i've got a three screen experience sometimes i have my watch on and then i'm getting texts on my watch so you know oh my god this is my how head we do would, it my head would explode so so outside of these videos <laughs> everybody loves this fans for their teams go nuts for this do you enjoy forgetting the videos the actual mm-hmm. schedule release now you're a Pittsburgh Steeler fan you, are you excited when you actually see when they're playing everybody I watch so many schedule re- schedule release videos that I don't even know who the Steelers are playing I forgot when their bye week is like it, it was just too it was information overload this is what the next iteration of this needs to be because the NFL loves to stretch out the season, right? They they want like a big content thing to happen in May when no one's talking about the NFL. Right, right, and right. And they, they want to make this an event. They want something, you know, always happening in the NFL calendar. So next, I think we need to stagger the NFL schedule release team by team. So we'll do like the month of May after the draft next year, we should have AFC East and NFC East week one of May. And then the, you know, AFC South, NFC South, the second week of May. And then we kind of whittle it down. So each team has its own day of the week. And then by the time we get to the end, you know, you can kind of fill in the puzzle pieces. But then I get, I have more time to watch all the videos because it's just, they, every single team was doing it on the same day. I don't, I don't even know who this, I know they play the Raiders. I, that's oh all I remember. I, it, so we're interviewing, like I said, Jason Kelsey. This is my re- my retention. My retention is is this much. But, my but, attention span but, and my retention. But you're the norm, right? I mean, you are you are what this <laughs> era is, sadly. right? <clears throat> so we're, yeah. we're we're but what while we did me and Scott Graham at Westwood One did the show live, the two hour show. We taped some people before it and put it in to the broadcast. So we taped Jason Kelsey, center for the Eagles. We taped Garrett Wilson, wide receiver for the Jets. So. I'm asking them, you know, a, a couple of questions, and the producer would get in my ear at, occasionally and say, ask something about the schedule. And I'm thinking to myself, they don't care about the schedule. 
The players do not care about the schedule. Garrett Wilson was talking only about Aaron Rodgers and that whole thing, and understandably so. And Jason Kelsey is 80 years old. He's been in the league for 30 years. Do you think he gives a damn who he's playing or when he's playing him? And who's he's ever seen it all. No, no you're it's right. exactly right. I'm like, ask him a question about the schedule. What the hell you want me to ask him? I'd rather ask him. Jason Kelsey was thinking about retiring, and Garrett Wilson has Aaron Rodgers. I'm thinking that's where I'm going to go with the players. Andy Reid will talk about the schedule and such, but but players, man, I, I that's was what I'm, I'm like. I'm like a player, Mike. I'm like a player in that sense. I don't care who's on the schedule either. I'm you know who just focused on oh. week at a time. I'm like Bill Belichick. Really, I'm a good. I'm I'm a good fan in that way. The, the two things that I took from the schedule again, because I don't really care about it all, was that Detroit is playing on that opening Thursday against the defending Super Bowl champs, Kansas City. I think that is a great thing for Detroit. Detroit had a top five offense last year. We know the offense Kansas City has. So you have a chance for some pretty good fireworks. And a Detroit team who just, Green Bay is starting a, a quarterback who hasn't started in Jordan Love. The Bears are still at least a year away. So I think it's Detroit and Minnesota fighting for that division. And right out of the gate when teams aren't at their best, Maybe Detroit can catch Kansas City on one in the opening game. So I'm very happy for Detroit. And then all the um, international games, how for, for four of them, they're back-to-back. Like weeks, week four and then five has Falcons against the Jags and then the Jags against the Bills. By the way, it'll be Jacksonville's 10th and 11th international game. Uh, and, and if the league is still thinking about having a team be based overseas – in my eyes, Jess, there is no shot that's ever going to happen. Jacksonville would be that team, probably based in London. I don't think it will happen, but that's back-to-back weeks there in London. And then actually week six, it's the Ravens and Titans in London. And then week nine and ten, it's back-to-back in Frankfurt, Germany, Dolphins, Chiefs, Colts, Patriots. So the games overseas are very, very popular. They always sell out. I always like those a lot because they count. Now, like I said, when I did it, they were preseason games. So those are the things that interest me, I guess, more than, than anything else that people get excited yeah. about. I'm with you. I can't remember. Did you go to the Germany game last year? Or have you been to the Germany game before? I, I have not. I called the Mexico okay. City game last year. That's right. Okay. Um, I know you did one of the one of the games that was and, abroad. And I have a feeling I might be asked to do one of those back-to-backers either in Frankfurt or London where I'll do the game and then just spend the week in either Germany or London Ooh. and do the next game. So so that would be pretty cool uh, if I if I get to do that. I'll, I'll look forward to that. Well, let me know if you get like a companion pass or anything like that, because I've heard great things about I've never been to Germany. I've been I, I, I've been to London a couple of times, but, you know, look, just, you know, you, you, you know you, how to reach me, Mike. You do understand that my wife will probably want to go. But if she decides, you know, maybe she doesn't feel well, maybe I, gotta, I get to go. That's your next on the list. OK. All right. I think we can do that. <laughs> I, think, I think we're good at that. All right. Fine. I All right. feel like that's a no. Coming up, let's talk some F1, which uh, they seem like they're never racing anymore. And we do have another major coming up in golf, but there's no Tiger. And what kind of controversy can we have in this one? We'll talk about that next. <laughs> All right, Jess, uh, you know what? You know, I, I'm, I'm turning into an F1 lover, uh, watching Drive Ooh. to Survive, and, and I'm digging it, trying to learn more and more about it. But man, this year, and maybe it's me. I don't know. It seems like they're not racing as much. A- a- am I wrong? <laughs> I mean, it, you think they're being lazy? They're just I, like, yeah, we don't feel like it this no. week. That is very European, right? It Seriously, seems like they're so. always off. I mean, am I, and I know yeah. they're off weeks. I get it, but it, it seems uncharacteristically more than not. I don't know. Maybe I'm wrong. Uh, well, I, I do think because of the month-long gap, because there was a race that got canceled early yeah, in the schedule, yeah. it has seemed like there's been fewer races. But good news, Mike, there is a race this weekend in Italy, the Emilia Romagna Grand Prix, um, which is also uh, known as Imola. So Imola is a very exciting circuit. It's not the same kind of circuit as the last couple races, which are technically like street circuits, oh, which good. means okay. that you know they're really fast and fast corners, but tight. Uh, and you know, cars can crash, even though that didn't really happen very much the last couple of races. But um, the big, the big controversy now, because it's F1, there's always drama. There's yes. going to be lots of rain this weekend. So 
you know, I know we're going to briefly talk about golf before we sign up, sign off here, but go uh, golf and Formula One have a couple things in common, which is that the coverage of them a lot of the time is just weather related. Like you could do an entire segment on how weather will affect the race in the same way that if you turn on the Masters, you know, before the before the event starts, they'll just right. be talking about like wind speed for like an hour. So that's exciting. And you never know. Rain. Yeah, it's more dangerous conditions, but. You know, they might not start on time. They might wait. They might have to w use the, the wet tires. Who knows what's going to happen? But um, it, it always adds a little interesting element to the races. So we'll I, love, I love how they break it down. Uh, the, the circuit received a red alert from Italy's Department of Civil Protection. Uh, the alert warned of heavy rainfall on Tuesday and Wednesday with the potential for flooding and landslides in the area during the same oh. period. Yeah, that, that would... That would be rough, no doubt about it. The other thing to me that I was reading about that we, we, we've been talking about kind of the fall of Mercedes and the fact that they're supposed to be coming out with a brand new car. Yeah, like not completely brand new, but apparently like half new car is coming in Imola. Um, but now, you know, it remains to be seen if it's really going to be the weather's going to be that terrible. We probably won't be able to learn much from what kind of you know, upgrade they're bringing to the car. But again, like we kind of have to wait and see because if, if the weather is this crappy, they probably won't race a, a full race, but you never know. It's, it's bizarre. They've, they've also canceled races before because of rain. So does, does know. this race have a sprint attached to it? One of those sprint races or no, no, I, I okay. don't believe it does. I don't okay. think so. All right. Well, I'm looking forward to being able to watch some, some F1 again and see if Max Verstappen doesn't win a race uh, and, and if Mercedes can come back. And, if, and Aston Martin's TBD. been still the big surprise, right, for this year of how well they yes, been Yes, Fernando yeah. Alonso. Going back to your, your J-Lo comment, I think people in America would also be surprised who how famous Fernando Alonso and some of these Formula One drivers are internationally because yeah. we live in our little American bubble, bubble where yep. we think like Patrick Mahomes is the biggest – you know, star on earth. And then he goes to the Miami Grand Prix and he's got like a fourth of the followers of some of these other guys on social media, which isn't, you know, a great gauge for it, but it does tell you something about popularity. Oh, it, it still does, but the, 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 most, world. the most popular athlete in America out there and they pale to like soccer, right? The soccer stars and how yeah. well known they are. It's, it's absolutely incredible. So, all right. So F1 in Italy, hopefully uh, weather doesn't just, uh, you know, dismantle that one too bad. Then we also have a, a PGA championship going on this weekend. No Tiger. Tiger is, man, I mean, it, it's just, body is just completely breaking down on him. So, as he even says, who knows how many more of these I have in me. He's basically going to be, you know, a, a, a Charlie Woods dad watching his kid go, you know, on the circuit and see what he does at some point. But we had the PGA, and I, I guess the, the compelling thing is still – the PGA against Liv, right? And and that, we talked about that at the Masters, how between Brooks, was it Brooks Kepton and Phil Mickelson, um, you know, had done pretty well in the Masters. Uh, and, and then the big controversy, or there was a controversy, that after Mickelson's round, last round, he didn't get interviewed. And they're already talking mm -hmm. about it, the PGA this week for the tent, the interviews, the, the, the pre-tournament interviews that they, they were naming names of those that were invited and those that were not. And a lot of the live golfers were not invited to be interviewed. So there still seems to be that, that undertow, right, of, of PGA versus live until something can get worked out. Yeah, or, or it won't. I mean, it, but it's kind of like we were talking about off air. This, this major is the one that I think probably gets the least amount yeah. of attention. Yes. Like if yes. you weren't a big sports fan, you probably didn't know there was a – major coming up this weekend just because of how popular the other three are, I think. Um, so yes, I think it's a, it's certainly a storyline, but I also think that like the master storyline is, was way more uh, yeah. prevalent, I think in, uh, in terms of like how these things worked out this season. And, and there, there didn't seem to be any, any animosity between the two. Roy McElroy, who has been the most outspoken about Liv, he actually isn't golfing very well, and he hasn't said a whole lot as of late. There's going to be 18 players from the Liv Golf League at this PGA champ, in this PGA Championship field uh, coming up this weekend. So, you know, we'll see. But, but again, everybody who was waiting to see, was there going to be animosity? Were guys not going to talk to one another? We didn't see any of yeah. that. Was there any of that behind the scenes? I don't know. 
I don't know it's if we're golf. Gonna... I mean, golfers, uh, aside from a few, and I won't name names, you know, golf golfers yeah. like a dirty look is like a, a, a scandal. Exactly. Right? Like, we, you know. we may we may have to we may have to wait for the next full swing, you know, Netflix yeah. series, you know, right. to, to see if there was any <laughs> any animosity or not. So that's going on this weekend. So we'll see what goes on there. F one this weekend. Uh, as well. Basketball gets started, as we mentioned, in both conferences uh, for their finals. And I'm here uh, hanging out in Colorado Springs uh, for some Notre Dame events. And maybe I'll be with you next week, Jess, if I can figure out all the equipment. But I have no idea if you will ever see me again, if it's on on me to put it up. If you need help, do not call me. (laughs) 